Hi, I'm Paul Burns from the Canadian Gaming Association. I think we've heard uh, quite a lot from Adam. Uh, and uh, and uh, I want to talk about why should you care. Well, this is an opportunity for the city of Toronto. Uh, it's clear there are two very distinct proposals that have been put into the public realm from Oxford Properties for Front Street and MGM and Cadillac Fairview for the C&E Exhibition Place, Ontario Place site. And I think that when we look at this, let's, I'll, I'll provide some perspective to all of this. And I know Adam will never agree with anything I say, so I'll just uh, carry on. Um, in both cases, you're looking at the casino portion of the development taking up less than 10% of the square footage of the control for, for space. Really what an integrated resort is about is all of the other amenities that come with it in the hotel. In the Toronto's case, I think the most compelling argument is for expanded convention space. Toronto does rank well down in the list of cities for being able to attract a large convention because of our space is not up to snuff. Uh, we recently, the Greater Toronto Hotel Association Tours in Toronto said this just this week as they looked at the Oxford proposal for Front Street and said the 1 million square foot of contiguous floor space will allow them to bid on 400 current conventions that they are unable to bid for for this city because we do not have the suitable facility. They also said is getting a share of those would allow for an additional 850, and yes, there's more spend. This is the convention center numbers in Toronto and the Hotel Association, 850 million dollars in direct spend if we were able to capitalize on attracting those conventioners. So what do we have? Well, we have a 20-year experience of gaming in Ontario. The NDP government in 1993 introduced casino gaming to Ontario. We had that debate then, and since that time, we saw Windsor, Niagara, Rama, and lots of other communities without further expansion in the 90s. But we have 30,000 slot machines in Toronto at Woodbine Raceway. 5.1 million visitors a year go to that facility. And other communities from Kananakway, which attracts about 800, 900 visits, 100,000 visits a year, big and small. What we have also is a lot of body of history and experience in those 20 years of what gambling and having casinos and communities. And people talk about crime and sucking the life out of downtowns and other communities. And you will hear from the experience in talking at, and this is where very few people, especially in the city of Toronto, have gone to the other communities in Ontario because it is sexier to look at places like St. Louis and Atlantic City. And some of those aren't very good examples, I admit. They're also very old examples of the way casinos used to be built back in the 1980s and 70s and other places when it's not. Listen, people, bad architecture is everywhere. We have lots of it here, and the casino industry has probably been attributed for some of it in some parts of North America as well. So when we go back and look in those communities, in Brantford or in even Niagara Falls, which has seen five hotels built. They now have a convention facility. They have thousands and millions of visitors every year. They saw their unemployment rate drop in the 10 years post-casino opening by 36%. We have an industry that, on average, pays $50,000 a year for jobs in Ontario. And, and probably in MGM is saying that their average wage would be 60. They're basing it on what they pay in Detroit right now, $52,000 a year as an average wage. So they are good paying jobs. A lot of them will be unionized jobs too. And I think that what we want to understand is, is taking a look at our experience of having the debate over casino games. And I think we've had that debate in Ontario many times. It's here, we've had exposure to gaming. And what we want to do now is make sure that we can create an integrated resort that helps broader communities take advantage and building the infrastructure. Convention facilities have only been built in this country with public dollars. We have two proposals sitting on the table to expand our convention facilities, build the infrastructure around these communities, to enhance our convention facilities. And we'll talk about traffic for a second too, because I don't know where that 13.6 cars comes from, because we look at visitors per day in a lot of ways. And so the numbers would say, yeah, we build with 10 to 12 million visitors a year to the facility. When you're looking at 25 to 30,000 people a day, perspective, about 130,000 people a day visit the Eaton Center with 1,300 parking spots. Um, about 20,000 people move through the TD Center on a given day. So 
when you look at, and all these proposals have talked about enhanced linkages for transit, and they all have talked, and Oxford Properties is talking about 4,000 parking spots underneath the convention center on Front Street. But recognizing that casino customers don't come at 8 o'clock in the morning and go home at 4. It is an off-peak business. It's 24 hours a day, yes. And so the traffic volumes aren't all everybody arriving and leaving at the same time. And I think good planning and good work by our city councillors ensuring that we get the right development, the right iconic architecture that Toronto deserves. Because for all of the reasons that Rosario mentioned, that these companies do want to be here. They want to, because casino gaming is, as I said, is in a lot of places. They like the destination of Toronto. Caesars Entertainment has 44 million visitor people in their database, in their customers. Others have millions. When they market, they don't market just casino, they market the destination. It's like a Ritz Hotel or a Shangri-La, which have brought five-star hotels to Toronto. Are they marketing their rooms? Or are they marketing a destination? They're marketing a destination. Their customer base, loyal to them, will visit their hotels in lots of cities. And we need more help marketing our city and bringing more visitors here. So I think there is a tremendous opportunity for other infrastructure in the casino gaming is here. It's part of our community. Anybody can open a laptop right now and can mobile phone. It's here. That part of our debate and, and having access to gaming, we can't put it back in the bottle. In Ontario, it opened up in 1993. In those markets where we have developed and talk about the success, those markets have changed. Windsor Detroit gaming market is bigger today than it was a few years ago. Most of that business is on the other side. And we've seen, and that's why the modernization of gaming has to occur, because with any business, OLG looked at it and said, our facilities aren't in the right locations. We need to be in other locations where customers are. And that's why they're looking to modernize their business. It's simple. They've invested money, and they want to create a product now. And they don't think taxpayer dollars should be used to invest in casinos. Because that's what we've done over the last 20 years, is use taxpayer dollars to build casinos. And they rightfully said, the government has said, no, enough. Let the private sector invest their money, and let them help grow the business, build the business in Ontario and build what, frankly, customers are looking for in the gaming. People enjoy casino gaming. It's not for everybody. But some people, they do like it. They go, they travel to places and do it. There's over 275,000 departures a year from person to Las Vegas. People like to do it. And so when we look at the opportunity in front of us, it's about creating an iconic resort in a location and creating facilities where the city needs some attention. And looking at, and I encourage you to go to the websites and take a look, oxfordplace.ca. They lay out their plan there. MGM, Cadillac Fairview, MGMCF has their plan laid out on there. And there's been lots of written in the media. And I encourage you to look at them because they are innovative ideas for looking at some pieces of Toronto that probably could use a little attention and a little investment. So I'll turn it over to the questions because we've heard a lot of talking. And thanks very much.